Thank you, Chairman Takano, and welcome to all the new members. I see a lot of new members on the committee, and, and uh, we've already had a busy start, so welcome to the committee. Um, with the exception of this morning's joint hearing, um, this is the committee's first hearing of the 116th, and I applaud you, Chairman, uh, for calling this hearing and for uh, ensuring right out of the gate that our work is forward thinking. The Department of Veterans Affairs is at a critical junction. Access and accountability crisis of 2014 brought VA back to the forefront of our national consciousness and usher, ushered in a season of change that has left no facet of VA untouched. Last Congress saw major pieces of legislation acted to <clears throat> fundamentally transform how VA provides care to veteran patients, how VA makes uh, decisions about modernizing and realigning medical facilities, how VA processes disability claims appeals, how VA recruits and retains medical professionals and support staff, and for how long VA administered the GI Bill uh, benefits, and how employees found responsible for poor performance or misconduct are held accountable. That's a mouthful we just did right there. And, and uh, I want to thank the members, the current returning members of the committee for their work on doing this. That is to say, uh, nothing of significant strides that were made with respect to electronic health record modernization and interoperability with the Department of Defense. This Congress, our focus will need to remain squarely on how these major initiatives are being implemented and how VA is preparing for the revolution they represent. Our work in the last two years set the stage for what VA will look like and how VA will function a decade from now. But as the saying goes, and this is one of my favorite uh, philosophers, Yogi Berra, if you don't know where you're going, you might end up someplace else. And it is incumbent on all of us, and especially you, Mr. Secretary, to cast a strong vision on VA's future, to put the right processes and the right people in place to enact that vision, and to remain steady in the face of stumbling blocks and struggles that are inevitable when change of the size and scale we're talking about is concerned. And I want to note, <coughs> That change will come not just from VA, but from the veterans themselves. In the year 2030, the veteran population will look markedly different than it does today. And I'm Mr. Chairman, I look markedly older than I do today if I make it that far. Uh, there will be fewer veterans overall. There will be more veterans who are women and more veterans who are racial minorities. There will also be more veterans living and working in the South and West by 2030 than we see today. These demographic changes are significant, and VA is going to have to start preparing for them now if the department stands any chance of being prepared for them tomorrow. And that's why I believe so strongly in the need for a, uh, expedited implementation of the Asset and Infrastructure Review portion of the Mission Act. A rapidly changing veteran population necessitates a rapidly changing VA. The AIR Act specifically structured to assist VA in making those changes and to ensure that those changes are made through an objective, transparent, fully data and consensus driven process rather than by bureaucrats behind closed doors. I urge you to, in the, in the strongest terms, Mr. Secretary, not to delay the air implementation and to work with this committee on any legal Im impediments to swift implementation of air. It is perhaps your greatest tool in preparing the VA for 2030. I want to end with a quick note of, on uh, information technology before yielding. In the year 2030, if all goes well, the VA will have just finished EHR modernization and will have a seamless health record exchange with DOD. The EHR's development and operational costs will be predictable because VA will have shifted most of them to Cerner. But 11 years is a lifetime in the software industry, and the EHR is just one element, albeit a big element of the VA's overall health IT. We need to stay focused uh, on the ultimate goal, interoperability. When the CERNA decision was originally announced, I called on Secretary Shilkin to implement the new EHR inside of a world-class interoperability platform, not to build on interoperability functions inside EHR. I believe that even more strongly today. The partnership with Apple and the Health App is a great example of interoperability solutions that work just as well today with VA Vista as it will with, in the future with Cerner. I think VA should incorporate an interoperability strategy and any kind of roadmap for the future, and I look forward to hearing this afternoon about how VA intends to do just that. Mr. Chairman Takano, I thank you again for calling this uh, hearing today, and I yield back uh, my time.